welcome to part three of the BDs, and um, I'm glad you're here. All four of you. Today we are going to be talking about blood sugar. Inside of this little package is my blood glucose meter. It's a man purse, okay? And there's about three or four things inside this package. The very first one is this, test strips. This little tiny test strip is actually coated with a chemical which interacts with your blood and gives you a readout telling you how high your blood sugar is. I always wondered why doctors never referred to it as your blood sugar and they always call it your blood glucose. Doctors always want to abbreviate things and blood glucose is BG, but blood sugar is BS. Having a doctor tell me to check my BS levels. Well, you and I both know those are just off the charts right now. Another thing inside my little satchel is this thing right here, which actually checks my blood sugar. Inside is this little pointy thing right here called the Lancet. The Lancet is actually what pricks my finger and causes me to bleed. This little end is like cocking a gun. You basically pull this back, this end loads, and when you push that button, Bring on the pain. Last but not least is this little thing here, the blood glucometer, which actually makes these little test strips work. Once it turns on, it will match a code which says 20, which matches this little number, which says 20. I've never had an actual code come out to 666, but there are times I feel like that little machine is possessed. What with the beeping and the beeping and the beeping all night long. Now I told you a little while ago that I do check my blood sugar about 16 times a day, and here is why. I have to check my blood sugar when I wake up and when I go to bed, there's two. I have to check it before and after every meal. There's another six. My meter reminds me every hour and a half to check my blood sugar again, add another seven. And if I've exercised that day, I need to make sure I check it before, after, and during exercise. Yeah, I'm way up there, baby, way up there. I feel kind of like Mr. Rogers putting my shoes back on here. Hello, television neighbor. I'm glad we're together again. Most doctors will tell you that your fingertips are the best place to check it, and usually around the outside edge. You definitely don't want to go here because that's where it hurts the most. There's also a lot of doctors who tell you that you can check your forearms and prick your forearm. Here, here again, I know I'm not a doctor, but um, I've already got diabetes. I don't want to look like I've got leprosy with little prick marks up and down my arms. Well, dang, man. You already got a big forehead. Get on top of that chicken pox and you look like you got the leprosy. Now that actually does come out to a heck of a lot of pain throughout the day. So I came up with a system where each day I only pick one set of fingers and I just work on those. And wouldn't you know it, today happens to be the middle finger. So today all I'm doing is pricking these two fingers. They'll heal up in about two days and then I don't have nearly as much pain. You guys remember those old cartoons where Tom and Jerry would like shoot at each other and Tom would get full of bullet holes but then water would squirt out of them all over the place? Yeah, that's what I feel like. Except I'm not a cat. Nobody shot at me with bullets. And it's blood, not water. It's kind of like the Quentin Tarantino of Tom and Jerry films. So just for the heck of it today, I figured I would show you what 16 different finger pricks looks like on one hand. This is where hiring a midget out of Los Angeles for $200 an hour would come really in handy. This is kind of rough, but this is basically what happens to me every single day. 16 times a day, 16 finger pricks. But remember, today's middle finger day. So the big question is, does this hurt? And yeah, it does hurt, but after a while, you really do get used to it, and it's not all that bad. This little thing here means you need a drop of blood. All you do is get the blood right on top of the meter. It'll beep, it'll count down for five seconds, and give you a reading just like that. 161. Wow, that sucks. On average, a good reading for me would be between 90 and 130. You will notice, on my little meter, the number 161 shows up here. Coincidence? I think not. I push a few buttons, and in one and a half hours, I get to do it all again. I'm the luckiest man alive! Um, well, I gotta call you back here in about five minutes. Well, I don't think I like diabetes. It's actually pronounced diabetes. Well, I don't think I like you neither. So how bad is 161? <coughs> I'm not gonna die. So that's it for this edition of the BDs Part 3. Next time we will talk about do's and don'ts, what you can and cannot say around diabetics. And I'll also be reading viewer mail from all of you who got into trouble for showing people your middle finger all day long.